Well, good Monday morning. Welcome to Connect, the California MBA's weekly podcast featuring one-on-one interviews with movers and shakers in the mortgage industry. I'm Dustin Hobbs, communication instructor at the California MBA. We've got a great guest today. I'm really excited to hear his perspective and thoughts on the industry. We've got a bit of a a, a unique guest today, different uh, side of the industry than we typically uh, uh, cover in the podcast here. So it will be really exciting, I think, for the audience here to find out sort of what's going on actually on the reverse side of the business. So, but before we do that, I want to thank our sponsors at Incelerate. Incelerate, the leading mortgage lead management CRM and engagement platform that helps lenders close more loans by increasing efficiency gains across sales, marketing, operations, and management, has recently announced the first of its kind mobile app. This groundbreaking mobile app features full lead management, lead distribution, click to call, inbound call routing, first call automation, and two way compliant text messaging and provides access to critical loan information without having to use a laptop or log into their LOS system. It also empowers loan officers by intelligently distributing leads, managing pipelines, prioritizing their day, automating best practices, and personalizing the borrower's journey all from the mobile app. So for more information or to catch a demo, visit Incelerate.com or you can call the number listed here in the description below. All right, well, before we get into the conversation today, I wanna toss it over to Susan Malazzo, our CEO for this week's weekly update. Susan? Thank you, Dustin. Hi, this is Susan with the California MBA, your weekly video update. Well, this week is our Western Secondary Market Conference happening virtually on the 23rd and the 24th. We're gonna be kicking the conference off with our CEO panel, moderated by John Hedlund with AmeriHome, and his panelists will be Jim Farash with AmeriHome, Marianne McGarry at Guild Mortgage, and Claudia Merkel with National MI. Great, uh, great conversation with these uh, industry leaders about managing risk through um, through this this year. We're also going to be hearing uh, from FHA Commissioner Dana Wade. We'll have a panel on uh, the update on capital markets, uh, mergers and acquisitions, how COVID-19 has changed how we're going to be doing business going forward, and also a session on diversity and inclusion and how your company is uh, making that possible within your own corporate structure. In addition to the great uh, sessions that we'll be featuring during the Western Secondary Market Conference, we will be welcoming an award-winning musical guest to join us for our Diamond Sponsor Party on the evening of the 23rd. So that is something you definitely do not want to miss. If you haven't yet registered, there's still time to do so. You can visit our website and go to any of our sponsors who all have promo codes that will allow you to register for free. So I'll look forward to seeing you virtually at our Western Secondary Market Conference later this week. That's it for this week. Back to you, Dustin. All right. Thanks, Susan. Okay, let's get into the conversation now. Today, I'm excited to welcome Joe Langner. Joe is the president of Reverse Vision. Joe, welcome. Hey, thank you very much, Dustin. Yeah. Well, once you, uh, before we get into the uh, uh, conversation in our uh, Q&A here, why don't you tell us, give us a a 30-second breakdown of uh, who Reverse Vision is? Sure. Reverse Vision is uh, the leading supplier of LOS and connection technology that positions the reverse mortgage in the hands of loan officers, both those who are dedicated to uh, the reverse mortgage process and soon those who are in the forward world who also want to add reverses like another product to their platform. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's start with you. Let's go. Let's start with your background here as we get into the uh, Q&A here. What uh, what got you into the business and then uh, what got you sort of on the reverse side of the business? Um, and then uh, over to uh, reverse uh, reverse vision. Sure. So my background, I started in mortgage, geez, 18-ish years ago, I guess, I guess it was. I spent 17 years with Dun & Bradstreet. Um, and then I, uh, I looked for a new opportunity. I connected with Sig Anderman over at Ellie Mae, and I was the chief operating officer for Ellie Mae for about nine years, a little over nine years. Uh, I joined them shortly after uh, we purchased Contour and Genesis, which at that time were the number two and number three LOSs in the market. And um, uh, Jonathan Kaur, who's the who, who's recently retired, um, we joined relatively at the same time. He was a few months ahead of me, um, and together we worked to bring Encompass to market. So I was with Ellie prior to Encompass and was responsible for bringing it to market, sales, marketing, uh, support, and so forth, um, and was with them through the initial IPO. Uh, I got recruited out of the industry for a few years, worked at a, a global ERP business, and then found myself back again working with uh, Lionel Urban over at uh, PC Lender. Worked with him to help scale the business, and we uh, we successfully sold that company to Pfizer. And after that engagement, I uh, became CEO of Blue Sage Solutions, 
which is a, a new modern LOS, a forward LOS, uh, web-based uh, targeting the, the your tier one and tier two lenders, the, the larger lenders. I was there for about four years or so, I'm sorry, about two and a half years or so, and I had the opportunity to uh, to work a little closer to home. Uh, Police Age is on the East Coast and I, I live in California. And so John Button, who's the CEO here and I got together and uh, I learned a lot about the reverse market. It's a, it's a, it's a huge potential opportunity. And I think uh, my experience in working with the forward lenders is gonna help us take the reverse product and integrate it and put it inside of uh, the systems that forward lenders use. Uh, and you know, one of the reasons why I came to Reverse Vision is um, you know, what I found in doing my research is most LOs know about reverses, but are a bit confused on them and really don't represent them to their market. And uh, I did a study, a, a research uh, paper I read on uh, for, that Stratmore put together showing in, and this was in 17, so it was a few years ago. But uh, back then they looked at, you know, the percentage of loans that are done to folks who are 62 or older, uh, who you know, potentially could qualify for a, a reverse mortgage. And what we what they found is 18% of all mortgages that were closed were actually closed to folks who qualify or potentially could qualify for a reverse. But when they called those folks and talked to them, they never heard about it as an option. Wow. So today, a very small number of reverses are done, about maybe 50, 60,000 a year versus the 1.3 million uh, loans that are closed with, with seniors, with folks who'd qualify. So what I saw is a sales and marketing and technology um, uh, challenge and you know our goal is to position at least make it an option for those folks in addition to other options that those loan officers are, are, are showing them and in today's environment many times the reverse mortgage is actually a, a better solution for the consumer so so where I saw it I saw a huge opportunity I saw the opportunity of linking and connecting uh, the reverse technology with the forward technology and then you know expanding and growing the market and, and offering more choice for the borrowers yeah, well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, well, speaking of opportunity, then, uh, I mean, obviously, the news right now in the mortgage world is dominated by the you know ongoing refi boom. Yeah. But you know, to your point about opportunities, I mean, at some point that refi boom is going to fade, and and uh, there's going to be a a, a a readjustment, I think, on a lot of lenders' part. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I think maybe most of them, or some of them, or at least should be looking at uh, reverse as a, a potential stopgap or something to fill their pipelines. What's so, yeah. you know, they may be asking right now, what's the state of the reverse market right now? Yeah, yeah, you know, I think it's always, it's great if you can offer choices for your customers and having the capability at least to have the conversation. You know, you might get leads from financial planners and, and other sources for folks who are kind of looking at retirement planning and incorporating the mortgage into that thinking, right? Um, but with reverse, we've been doing really well too, both refis and purchases. Um, we've seen solid double-digit growth this last year uh, with the HECM product, which is a, an FHA guaranteed product, but also with private loan products. The lenders, investors have come up with uh, additional reverse products that allow the consumer to even reap more you know, dollars out of their equity, where there's some limits on the HECM product of you know, six, 700,000. With these private loan products, you can, you can take more if you have more equity because you know, they're a private loan. So we've been seeing solid growth. We've also seen solid growth in both retail and wholesale. And actually in today's uh, newsletter from RMD, they uh, had, a, had an article talking about how actually wholesale is starting to grow even faster than retail. So, so if you're a broker, it's a great opportunity to, you know, again, you know, bring in additional products that you could you know, position with your customers. Um, the other thing that uh, that's going on in you know in today's world is there's a lot of volatility in the stock market. You know, you you, you look at your 401k or the money in the market, and sometimes you're in a happy mood because it goes up a lot, and sometimes you're like, oh, it goes down a lot. And 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 unfortunately, in our economy, in our world, you know, people aren't really in a position that can save as much as they'd like to, and so they're going into retirements without necessarily you know a pension plan, without a lot of savings, and their home. You know, in many cases, they're thinking that it's it's just, you know, it's an asset, but maybe something they can't leverage. With a reverse, it gives you the option to, to either, you know, use the money you need to live on, either pulling money out from equity or pulling money out from the stock market. But it gives you that choice. And where financial planners are, are liking that is if the market goes down, you know, in many cases, it's smart to leave your money in there because we tend to have that bounce back. And as long as you own those shares of stock, the bounce back will benefit you. 
But if you take the money out because you need it for living expenses or what have you, you know, you're kind of stuck there. So what's nice in managing your, your retirement is to have a combination of pull the money out of either your home when the market's not doing what you want it to, or uh, the market when it is doing what you want it to do, to give you that balance. And again, financial planners are, you know, starting to recommend this more and more. And that's also part of the, the reason for the growth in the, in the product offering. That makes sense. Yeah. So, well then, you know, I, I, I guess my next question would be, are there particular challenges that uh, you see on the reverse side that, uh, you know, maybe uh, specific to the current COVID crisis or something that's different than what's going on on the uh, the forward side of the business? And, you know, I mean, is it maybe something like you said, you know, uh, folks changing their retirement plans or, you know, something affecting their retirement plans based on maybe the volatility in the market or something? What's just, what's your take on uh, what's going on there? Well, so the volatility of the market, it, you know, it's it's been a good run for the market. And not everyone has, you know, the 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 situation where they can't have money in the market. They may only have their mortgage or, or a small savings amount, right? Um, but the COVID has actually, you know, in a part kind of benefited our industry um, in that, you know, we we have the opportunity of really helping our customers, you know, with either better cash flow or financial options. And where COVID has made it a bit more challenging to sell. You know, we're all getting better at Zoom calls and, and all walks of life are getting much more comfortable with technology. You know, in the past, you know, like when ATMs first came out, right? People were hesitant saying, oh, I don't necessarily trust the ATM. I want to go and find branch. But, but after a while, it's like, no, I, I don't ever want to go into my branch. I just want to use the ATM. Well, the same thing's happening with the digital mortgage, with e-signatures with uh, you know notary cam type of relationships where you're you're in a virtual environment and where reverse is still you know developing uh, technology to to serve those different needs for different you know suppliers and so forth what we've seen is we've seen uh, an accelerated support from the government we've seen an accelerated um, interest from the consumer uh, many of the loan officers are saying that you know in the past you really had to walk through everything with folks but you know, we're all getting more comfortable with technology that you can you can have great conversations you know like we are now with a with a zoom or a go to meeting call you know you can share documents you can you know email and review them and face to face and then when it comes to signing you know you have your e-signatures and and you know we're we're not completely at a digital mortgage there's some you know the notes still need to have some paper signatures and so forth but but you know sending a proposal uh, talking about the different options they have, sending disclosures, getting those signed. Those those are all, you know, very much parallel to what, what you see in the forward world. Sure. Well, I would imagine, too, I mean, as, uh, you know, as uh, older folks or folks who are uh, eligible for a, uh, a reverse, you know, do more Zoom calls with their families even. And if they're not working at a job in an office, as they do more calls with their grandkids over Facebook Live, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, in a sense, uh, conditioning them to be able to do a Zoom call with a a, a loan officer or something like that to you know talk about a reverse mortgage. Yeah, act, exactly. And the thing is, is you know uh, we as an industry, you know, uh, continually work to educate the market on on what reverse really means. There, there's a lot of misconceptions. You know, uh, years and years ago, you know, they were I would I would say maybe considered a, a little bit more of a risk situation. Um, but over the last few years, uh, there's been a lot of you know compliance and controls that have put in place. So it's really a borrower friendly solution. Um, you know, you own your house. It's not like you're going to lose your house and you can refi out of it if, if you know, you want to change your mind on how you're doing things. You know, you have a lot of flexibility, but but again, you know, you can even make a mortgage payment. I mean, a lot of people went into reverses as a, you know, I'm having some financial challenges. Let me use my equity. You know, let, let me get rid of my house payment to free up my cash flow. Those are all really great things. Well, what a lot of folks are doing is they're getting a reverse, but they're still making a mortgage payment. And as they do, that just increases the amount of equity they have. And, you know, they can still maintain a mortgage, but then they're building up this nest egg that they have. And then when they need to use those dollars, you know, they have that flexibility. So, so you know, there's some, there's some misunderstanding. So we need to, you know, market and communicate more, you know, to the general audience and to, and to the, uh, the loan officers in, in our market as well is that, you know, you know, the folks who are talking with the borrowers, you know, our goal is to make sure that they understand more about what the product is, make it easy to quote, you know, integrate it into their workflow of the tools that they're using today. And, you know, again, just make it another product that the uh, consumer can, you know, evaluate as an option, you know, when they're looking at their uh, at their uh, their long term planning. Yeah, no, I agree. I think there's a huge opportunity there. 
Um, so let's uh, switch gears here a bit and talk about uh, what's going on at the at the company itself here. Uh, how have you guys adapted to sort of the the new uh, work from home reality that uh, you know every company has had to face this year? Yeah, you know it's been interesting. So I joined um, I joined RV here in March, um, about a week and a half before we decided to let every ask everybody to to stop coming into the office. So so I had a full week of uh, learning our business, learning the company. Um, have you and, had time to set up your desk even at the office? No, not really. <laughs> I hung a picture, um, but we work virtually. We we use all web based applications. We we already use things like Slack and GoToMeeting and and uh, you know all of our our, our ticket queries is as a tool that's a you know web based tool for for managing you know inquiries. Um, our CRM is web based. Our 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 tickets for our development are, are a web based solution as well. So so we had a very thorough and comprehensive uh, business continuity plan. So, uh, you know, I was here a week later, I talked with our, our, our CTO about, you know, what would happen if we do need to send everybody home and he'd say it'd be no problem at all. That Friday, we, you know, that Thursday we made a decision, that Friday everybody was working from home and it was zero, zero hiccups because of, you know, the, the programs we had in place, everyone had what they needed. Um, so we, that was a, a nice benefit. Um, we found that our customers did pretty much the same. Most of them are, you know, working virtual. And again, through using the technology like we're using today, uh, it's really helped make things, you know, run more smoothly. Now, now I will be truthful, you know, it, it's decisioning and collaboration. You know, things take a little longer, I think, um, you know, than they did prior to this because getting everybody on the same page is a little more difficult when you can't just bring everybody in a conference room. Um, but but I think our our industry and our, our our company itself is is learning how to adapt and you know we're seeing we're seeing a good benefit there. Yeah. Are you, do you think how much that uh, yeah, change do you think is permanent? You, know, you guys think that once things uh, sort of clear up a bit, are you going to bring back most people to back to the office, or is there going to be you know certainly more work from home going on you know indefinitely at this point? Yeah. You know I think our new normal is to leverage the tools that we have. And uh, you know, people are working as hard as they ever had. So it's not like you know, you go home and you're not working. You're, in fact, I think people are working harder. You know, nights and weekends, and you know, the computer's there. I can do a quick thing, and it's kind of like always on your mind. We we actually your phone been never doing, leaves your hand or your pocket. It's yeah, always exactly. we're doing we're doing home vir you know virtual happy hours. We we sent some gifts to the people at their home just to you know just to kind of change things up a little bit. Um, you know, to make sure that we 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 still have that you know those conversations and, and so forth, and that we have work life balance you know with our teams. But but I I don't know I you know when we're ready to get back. We're here in San Diego. You know our whole company, you know everything with a repair decision is built in the USA, built and actually here in San Diego, California. Um, so all of our folks are are local. Um, what we'll probably end up doing is like a, a two day a week rotating schedule where we have the the groups of folks who need to work together. You know that pod of of individuals. Maybe they work a Monday, Thursday, and maybe a different pod of folks work a Wednesday, Friday, or something like that. And so we rotate it. So we do have the benefit of a couple of days a week where people are together, but it's the folks who typically work together. So we can manage you know the risk to the employees as well as uh, you know capitalize on the the things that we need to do together. Um, and so we're we we're still working from home. Um, our, our plan is to wait until, you know, the, the county of San Diego says it's okay for businesses to come back. And, and that's slowly coming back. And then once that happens, we'll probably still wait a little bit longer just to be on the safe side because um, things are running fairly smooth the way we are today. And then we'll probably go to a two day a week and then, and then we'll see. So, you know, I don't see us going back to full five days a week, everything. Um, you know, probably for another six, eight months, a year. I, I don't know. We're, we're just going to have to see until this stuff is behind us all. So, so right now we're still, you know, cautiously optimistic. We'll get back in the office a couple of days a week. Yeah, no, I, I'm curious how that's all going to shake out over the next couple of years, just industry wide. And I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, colleagues on the, uh, on the commercial real estate finance side who deal in the office market, they're, they're curious about that as well. Um, yeah. uh, question for you. How has the, uh, I mean, the government's response to all of this has been largely, again, focused on you know the forward business and the uh, the residential side. But you know, how has it helped or hurt it or impacted even the uh, reverse side of the business? Well, well, um, there's a, a trade group, NERMLA, which is the Reverse Mortgage uh, Trade or Association, and they work very closely with the government. And the government's actually been extremely supportive. Um, you know, they they've been helpful in 
changing appraisal requirements to make it easier. Um, they've been doing things like, uh, you know, fast tracking e-closing capabilities, and they've been uh, helping out with the uh, with the counseling sessions. Some of the states required a face-to-face -face meeting on a counseling, just like any other FHA loan. A, a consumers has to do a you know a bit of counseling just to make sure they understand you know the product that they're purchasing and so forth. And in some states, that had to be a face-to-face -face type of situation. Now they're all, you know, going to do. They're doing it virtually. So, so I'd say I would say that the government has been doing, you know, what it can, uh, and it's been doing it faster um, than you know historically, because you know everyone's trying to make this work for for our customers, you know, and the industry. Um, the other thing is, is is in addition to NERMLA, you know, we've been also working with the MBA, which I'm I'm really excited about because that gives us the opportunity. To educate the market again on you know the value of the product and what it means to lenders you know adopting or adding the reverse mortgage as an option for their customers so we recently kicked off some education sessions so we can educate the market more and, and we really appreciate the mba support on that as well and you know obviously the mba is highly influential you know with government affairs and you know I, our goal is to just make sure that you you know remember to incorporate you know the reverse into your thinking when we're representing other needs for the lending industry. A, a reverse mortgage is just another more, it's just a different type of mortgage, right? So, you know, while it's separated, because, you know, historically it's been kind of technology has required us to do that, our goal is to change that, to make it in, in the solutions that the customers are using, just another product. You know, you might need some engines or things to come up with the, the you know, the value to the customer and so forth. That would all be in the cloud, behind the scenes, but, you know, position where the where the loan officers are doing their work. So so again, government affairs have been really helpful. The education, you know, with the MBA and normally have been really, really helpful. And uh and we're seeing, you know, continued support in that vein. So again, I, I expect to see this uh this segment grow uh, and continue to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well and you know you mentioned uh, technology a a minute ago there. What's the state of the I mean you guys are right obviously right in the thick of uh, technology on the reverse side where what's the state of uh, technology there where where does maybe some growth need to take place and I mean you kind of touched on it earlier but maybe dig a little deeper into that and uh, you know sort of what uh, what's on the uh, what's on the dock coming forward yeah I, you know I think this is the one area that I'm I'm really most excited about and you know one of the key reasons why I, I joined Reverse Vision is that I saw this as kind of a technology sales and marketing challenge that can be solved by integration. You know, when I was with Ellie Mae, we did a, a tremendous amount of partnerships with other software companies and with service providers. So we could really build into the workflow of the loan officer, you know, the tools that they need to, to answer questions to the customer and to automate as much as what's automatable, so to speak. Uh, you've heard John, Jonathan talk about that a lot. And I, you know, he and I work together a lot and I, I you know, I truly, subscribe to the same thing let's let's not think about replicating a paper process let's find a way to make it easier and faster for all of our customers so in the reverse side you know the challenge is it's always it, with reverse vision has been you know if you if you do reverse mortgages we have our los as a as a you know a standalone tool designed for reverses and then you have the other los's in the market that are designed for you know construction loans and first and second mortgages so, uh, so what we've been doing is is working actively on kind of re-architecting our core platform to be able to support integration and communication with other systems. And there's there's an interface API. It's an interface that allows you to connect to other solutions and move data seamlessly back and forth. And it might be data, it might be images, it might be documents. You know, there's different things that you build these APIs for. But what it allows us to do is to allow a loan officer who's using, let's say, a, a simple Nexus or a mortgage coach or, or, you know, any of these modern device solutions that help them sell, they'd be able to open up that device and we could communicate to them through these APIs so they could price the loan, they could, uh, you know, show the value to the customer, send a proposal, you know, take an application, just like they would any other mortgage. So, so where technology, where we're looking to lead is through partnerships with other LOSs and CRM companies, pricing engines and so forth, and to take these tools and put them inside of those other solutions that the lenders are already using. And again, you know, you have a drop down and it says, hey, it's a first, it's a second, it's, it's a HELOC. Well, there's a reverse, you know, to make it just another product, you know, is where I think we'll, we'll truly accelerate. 
and, and give the opportunity for those you know 1.3 million or so folks who who get a mortgage to at least know that there's an option. Now now the benefit to the lender is reverses tend to have you know, tend to be a little bit more profitable loans, uh, both on the originating side as well as on the uh, on the secondary marketing side. So so there's there's financial incentives uh, to do this from a lender perspective. There's value to the consumer as far as choice, you know, and and so we see it as a win-win. But what's the hurdle? Well, the hurdle is getting these systems to talk to each other when you know these systems were not designed initially you know, to be in a kind of a networked effect. So so working with more modern technology has made it easier to do that. And a lot of the investment we're making, and you'll start to see more of, the, you know, you're gonna see a few announcements of our, our, our 9.0 release, which is coming out in the in the November timeframe, which is, is a, a huge change for us, a huge re-architecting, our, our, our architecting of the solution, um, as well as, you know, the announcements of the different APIs that we'll be bringing out. And then, you know, shortly after that will be the, some of the partnerships that we're building now to to enable this in the marketplace. So lots going on here, and in addition to that, we've we've grown our, our staff by about 30% um, since I joined. We uh, we've been doing virtual interviews. We've been going to parks and 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 you know interviewing folks and so forth. But but we did need to bring it. You know we we need to increase our our development team because you know heavy investments there. We need to increase our our support organization because we're seeing some solid growth. And, and in our sales and business development area, you know, to work with our clients as they adopt some of these new capabilities. Yeah, well, that's exci it's exciting times have been for sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's uh, maybe, well, I guess we're not switching gears entirely here, but a uh, uh, question about borrower experience. Um, that's obviously a big, uh, big buzzword in mortgage tech circles these days. How is it uh, you know, different, the same for uh, uh, folks on the reverse side? If you're, let's say I'm a, an LO on that, you know, typically like you have mentioned, you know, typically just deals with forward products and doesn't really you know, understand how the reverse product works or maybe how you know, it fits into my suite of products. If I'm thinking borrower experience, what should I be thinking about? Yeah, so borrower experience, I would say, I would say as actually probably more important with a reverse than, than a traditional. But I still, I think it's critical. You know, the customer journey and borrower experience in every industry is 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 very very important. Um, what we found is in the reverse world, because there's some misconceptions. Uh, sometimes you're talking not only to the, the the individuals who are who are getting the loan, but also their family members. You know, because mm -hmm. there's some things of saying, oh well, if you do this, well, I lose the inheritance. Well, we lose our home. You know, we always wanted to stay in that home. And so it's very important to consider that there might be misunderstandings about what does this mean to the to the kids or the grandkids or what have you. And so I think it's important to ask those questions and to make sure that 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 comfort is there and to be available to talk to other members of, of the family about, you know, what does this mean, you know, in the bigger picture. Um, a lot of those folks are also, you know, the folks who will be taking over the finances of their elderly parents when you know when times get you know a little more difficult for them physically to keep up with the the things they need to do to, to manage things day to day so so i think that's very important um we've also seen you know research and, and the research was done on the forward world but but honestly i truly believe it applies to forward and reverse i mean you're you're making a very big decision it's a financial decision that you know it's probably your largest asset and and you really want to make sure that that you know, we're doing it as appropriate as possible. Um, so what we've done here at Reverse is we've partnered with Stratmore Group and Stratmore does the Stratmore SAT survey, which is after the loan closes, they do a survey to ask, you know, look for customer satisfaction. That's actually built into our product. So, you know, if you, if you join RV, that would be a part of the solution that you would receive in value. Now, what Stratmore has done through their research is they found that those who use Kind of a, 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 a you know a, a survey based approach and take it seriously and recontact the con the consumer. They have found that those companies who have really taken an aggressive approach of of understanding customer satisfaction have seen a, a 31 percent higher growth rate, 22 percent higher productivity, and they spend 120 dollars less per marketing lead because they get more referrals. Right. So so if you run a, a you know, a, a, a great organization and you're really connecting with your customers and you're, you're holding yourself accountable to the promises you make, you're going to see that in returns and 
in growth and profitability and satisfaction and referrals. And, and, in, and in the reverse world, because it's a smaller you know, segment, having good positive experiences and more referrals you know, benefit us all. Well, and borrowers of all ages still talk to each other. So you yes. know, you're gonna find out one way or another if uh, the borrower experience was good or not. Yeah. Um, so we talked about this a little bit, but uh, I'm curious if there's uh, anything we missed on uh, uh, technology wise. Is there a, you know, what's maybe the biggest technology change you foresee in the, maybe the immediate future, or the, maybe the couple of years down the road? What's the, the biggest thing you maybe see on the, on the horizon? Yeah, you know, I think the things you'll see is, is again, adopting more modern technology. Um, I think, you know, our work to, to include uh, via an API, the connections and expanding, you know, really the, the opportunity and the number of folks who have the opportunity to position reverse mortgages, you know, with their, with their borrowers. So, so for us, for, you know, probably the next couple of years, we'll be very much focused on, you know, making that a reality, making it just another product, just another option. Um, and, and really taking some of the mystery out of, out of what a reverse mortgage is. Um, so, so I see those as big things. The other thing I think you'll see is, is just like the forward industry is we're all gravitating to more of a paperless mortgage. You know, so being able to, to do all your registrations, be able to do all your signatures, all your compliance checks, your consumer communication, you know, integrating text messaging as well as you know, telephony or videos. You know, I think we're just going to see more and more adoption of the tools that are that are being used most of the places, but you know, I think we're still going to strive for truly an end-to-end -end where we're getting a, a a mortgage is is similar to getting a car. You know, it's a you know it might take a, a little bit of time filling out the paperwork and so forth, but but honestly, you know, you can walk in, get a car a couple hours later, and you're done. You know, why couldn't you do that with a mortgage? Well, well you can. Um, yeah. But or you, there's can, some you, regulatory can, you can you know buy it on your phone and have it showed up to your house. Exactly. So, you know, so I think we're getting there and I think you'll see, you know, it's not just technology, you know, it's, it's a risk, you know, the, the lenders and the investors need to make sure that, you know, everything is not, you know, there's fraud protections and, and that, that, that those are binding contracts in the event that there is a problem, you know, so, so there's some regulatory changes, there's some acceptance of, of e-signatures with notes, you know, and things like that. But, but again, I, I, I think these are decisions that as we evolve, um, the security will be played, put into place, the comfort will be put into place, and and we as an industry and, and you know we as a society will continue to leverage technology to make things easier and simpler and more secure, you know, for for all of us. So I, again, you'll you'll see a continued uh, automation of that paperless mortgage, um, and you'll see more and more companies trying to work closer together. They may be competitors in some veins, but you know you see a lot of Companies buying other companies. Black Knight has been buying a lot of companies. ICE has bought a lot of companies. Well, well, once they own that, that gives them that ability to manage both sides of the development to, to truly get these things to work closer together. So, so you'll see it through acquisitions. You'll see it, see it through, you know, API or, or interface developments. But, but again, there's it does take a village. You know, there's a lot of people involved in getting a mortgage done. And the more we can work closer together through modern technology, you know, I think the better our customers will be served. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think you're totally right about you know the changes coming both from the integration side and from acquisition. I think that's a really good point. Um, so you mentioned a couple of minutes ago the uh, sort of uh, your role in, in taking the mystery out of uh, maybe some of the aspects of the reverse business. So if I was an LO on that you know is you know 95% focused on uh, uh, the forward side of the business, what's maybe one thing I don't know that I should know about reverse? Yeah, yeah. So. I think one of them is is it is just another mortgage, believe it or not. It's a slightly different process. You use a, a slightly different form. Credit risk is not as critical. You know, you're looking at the evaluation of the property. And so there's a little bit of a different approach, but it isn't that much different. I, I think the, the thing as a loan officer I would want to understand is, is there's a huge underserved market. Uh, mm -hmm. Timing couldn't be better right now because people are, some people are really struggling um, or they're affluent, but they're really wanting to make sure that they have a smart approach to their finances, you know, in their later years. And so it's a very attractive solution, uh, it, you know, if you understand it. So, so what would I say is I would say, look at the market, look at the number of, you know, 62-ish or, or more, you know, older people you work with. And what you'll probably find is it's probably about, you know, 18 to 20% of the folks you talk to. 
and it's nice to have it as an option and you can easily add it to your portfolio and just broker them out to other investors so so adding it as a solution isn't that difficult um and and it, it could be a very very good solution and you know a good income generator for you as well um there of all the folks who got a mortgage there's also folks who didn't who didn't make the decision to go forward because maybe the product wasn't quite right for them um and you know with the interest rates as they are today in the reverse industry what that means is they, they can pull more equity out as far as the loan amount it can go up because of that. Um, and the rates obviously are extremely competitive these days. So, so it, it's a good time to, to look at it as an option and to, and to have it as, a, as an option for your borrowers. It may not be the right solution you know, every time, but, but you're gonna find that more often than not, you'll be surprised that it's a really great solution for, for certain people in certain situations. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Well, we're just about out of time here, but I've got uh, one last question about, and it actually concerns maybe the the future of Reverse Vision itself as a company. How do you guys see, you know, your the, the company evolving in the future to meet uh, the needs of the mortgage market just in general? Yeah, you know, I think I think what our goal, you know, to evolve is to become kind of a behind the scenes engine that we we're the experts at the documents, we're the experts at the calculations. But you know, you use your solution. So let's find a way to make it easy for you to position, sell, and close this fast, simple, easy. Um, I see us increasing our our brand marketing, our our ed customer education, being more advocates for the the product itself to support all of our customers who are positioning these products. And I think you'll start. You know, I'm hoping that you know because of the value it brings, you'll start to see you know some of the larger banks considering adding you know reverse as an option, which you know, again, it's just another endorsement of the solution to the 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 community of folks who be evaluating those. So, so I see us evolving. I see us growing. You know, like I said before, we we added 30% to our team all here in San Diego. Um, you know, when you sell to banks and, and folks who are you know are are highly concerned with security and risk, um, you know, who want to do vendor audits and evaluate the company for strength. You know, we are the market leader. We are we're very strong. We the majority of all reverses, you know, our technology touches. And one of the things that's kind of cool is we have, you know, lots and lots of, of brokers, brokers and bankers. So if you're an investor and you want to start, you know, buying reverse mortgages, you know, our whole marketplace is, is a potential opportunity for you. So, so we, we have a, a real good ecosystem of customers and opportunities to connect, you know, with these other systems. So, so I see us growing our business, increasing our, our brand awareness, increasing the, the the awareness of reverse itself and then hopefully you know positioning our solution within lots of other areas so so it becomes an option you know for the the forward uh lenders absolutely well hey i appreciate the optimistic outlook i always i always love to hear that um so uh joe uh if anyone wants to find out more about reverse vision where should they go what should they do www.reversevision.com <laughs> if you come to our site we you know we you know, can easily just uh connect with us. We'd love to talk to you and reach out. Uh, but yeah, www.reversevision.com would be the best way to do it. All right. Well, hey, Joe, thanks again for the time. Great conversation. Good to uh, hopefully we'll see each other in person at one point or another here when we can actually get back to a you know an in-person world for uh, conferences and events. Um, but uh, it's great to see you again today. Thanks a lot, Dustin. I appreciate your time. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, if you enjoyed the conversation here, make sure and uh, hit the subscribe button. You can subscribe to us here on our YouTube channel, as well as on SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And then we'll be back again next Monday for another episode of Connect. And we'll see you then. Bye.